Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I count John McCain as a personal friend. I've known him since before he became a United States Senate. If he needed my personal help, I'd go. He served our country bravely, nobly. But folks, America needs more than a brave soldier. They need a wise leader. Take a hard look. Take a hard look at the position John McCain has taken over the last 26 years of his career on the economy, on health care, on foreign policy. And you'll see, you'll see why I say that John McCain is just four more years of George Bush. And I'm not looking for an applause line. This is deadly earnest. On the issues, on the issues that you talk about at your kitchen table, can we afford Mary's tuition? What are we going to do about mom's MRI? How are we going to pay for it? Winter's coming. How are we going to heat the house? On those issues, the issues that we talk about every day, middle-class people, John is profoundly, profoundly out of touch. John McCain has confessed, and I quote, I want to make sure I get it right. He said, it's easy for me to be in Washington and, frankly, be somewhat divorced from the day-to-day -day challenges people have. Well, he's right. He's right. If all you do is walk the halls of power, all you'll hear is the wants of the powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that's why John McCain could say with a straight face as recently as this morning, and this is a quote, the fundamentals of the economy are strong. That's what John said. He says that we've made great progress economically in the Bush years. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I could walk from here to Lansing and I wouldn't run into a single person who thought our economy was doing well unless I ran into John McCain. <laughs> Folks, John just doesn't get it. He just doesn't understand what average middle class people are going through the last eight years. He doesn't get it. I don't doubt that John cares. He just doesn't think, he doesn't think that we have any responsibility to help people who are hurting. Just look at John's budget. Who would he give the tax cuts to? And how would he spend the money? You know, my dad used to have an expression. He say, don't tell me what you value. Show me your budget and I will tell you what you value. Well, folks, folks, by that measure, John McCain doesn't stand with the middle class by that measure. He stands firmly with George Bush in the corner of the wealthy and the well-connected. He stands with the CEO of ExxonMobil, who a year ago was testifying before my Judiciary Committee. And when I asked him, do you need the $2 billion in tax breaks you've just been given to drill for oil? He looked at me and his jaw quivered. I said, sir, you're under oath. And his response was, no, no, we don't need it. Well, John McCain not only supported that tax cut, John McCain now wants to add $4 billion in new tax cuts for the Exxon Mobiles of the world and the wealthiest Americans. Look, folks, look, folks, in addition to that, John's proposals, as he misrepresents ours, John's proposals call for an additional $300 billion a year in tax cuts over the next 10 years each year for corporate America and the wealthiest among us. Folks, I promise you, there is simply no daylight between John McCain and George Bush, at least none that I've been able to discern. 